I'm Phil Schaap. I'm the curator of Jazz at Lincoln Center. And I'm here to talk to you about jazz. I've been talking about the background to jazz's existence. Now I want to talk about jazz, and I want to tell you Thelonious Monk's own impression of what jazz is. He had the simplest and greatest of definitions. Jazz is freedom. That's it. Anything more gets uh, very complicated. And that's really the attraction to jazz music, that it is the music of freedom. The musicians are free to do things, and the audience digs that they're doing those things freely. That's the whole marriage of the audience and the participants who are actually making the music. And when jazz was first played by the New Orleans system, which we'll call traditional jazz today, polyphony, you know, most of you, if you've ever heard it, have probably heard it in its sextet form. The trumpet player is playing something around the melody, and the clarinet player is playing on a single note instrument the chords. He's arpeggiating them, as we say in the music biz. And the trombone player, you know, it's funny, I've been around for a while. When I first taught this lesson, I just said the trombone player is playing a Motown bass line with smears. And, you know, that doesn't work as well as it did, but I think some of you got it. The trombone player is playing a simple counterpoint with a lot of effects and human tones on his instrument. And they're all playing the same piece, even though they're all doing things so differently. And yet you know it's when the saints go marching in, or over in the glory land, or any of the pieces of traditional jazz. And they're really playing freely, as long as they stay in their network. Like if the trombone player starts playing the melody, the trumpet player may look at him and say, hey man, that's what I do. And if the trumpet player starts getting a little bit too dexterous and mapping out the chord, fleet of foot on his trumpet, the clarinet player says, no, 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 man, that's my scene. But as long as you stayed in your part of the music and as long as you swung, you could make up anything you want. And it was a very fetching and compelling component of the music. It's why you wanted to do it. Everybody else is playing written notes that somebody else told you to do. And here you're playing what you want to play. Jazz is freedom. But on the other side, there's the audience. This is very essential. You know, if there's no audience, there's no sound. The audience liked the made-up stuff. They understood that jazz music is freedom. And they even requested that they hear more of that free stuff. And on the other side, the musicians liked making up stuff. They were declaring themselves. So they wanted to play more ad-libbed, spontaneously crafted music. But there was a slight problem. Everybody's playing. The more ambitious you got about making up your stuff and the more people who were adding made up stuff, the more, it could be, it didn't have to be, the more clutter there was. See, New Orleans jazz is a fully developed ensemble music and stuffing something extra into the mix isn't the easiest thing to do. Now, there was a pioneer of New Orleans jazz, Sidney Bechet. He said, yeah, yeah, do it. I can do it. You can do it. Let's do it. And for himself, he was right. But getting the solo as it came to be and what the solo would be becomes one of the most complex developments in the entire history of jazz. Indeed, you know, everybody talks about doing something new. And I hope something new, fresh, and wonderful happens every day, particularly in these sweet sounds of jazz. But if you really want a revolution, think about these earlier breakthroughs. Swing or not swing. I mean, that's the whole ball game. And then the next revolution is solo or absence of solos. Initially, jazz was all ensemble music. So how would they stretch the opportunity for one person to play made-up stuff that reflected just on them as an individual? The end result is the solo. The idea was to have the band play the song as a collective jam. But then people would drop out, and one person would play in place of the melody a made-up passage. It's a simple formula. It's as old as the hills, theme and variations. But in jazz, the theme is presented by the ensemble, and the variation is by an individual 
replacing the melody of the song with made up stuff, while the rest of the band either lays out, meaning they don't play at all, or they represent the component of the song that has to remain, the harmony and of course that swinging rhythm. 